don't know. No. Welcome on our Is Mountain okay Morning I, like, Show. I have like this, I, the that recruiter guy obvious? with me today. He wrote Guide to Finding a Job. He always gives us tips, and today we're talking about the first day on the job. Bill, That's how are you doing? I'm well, Kelly. Tell me, where do you want to get started on this? Probably talking about what most people experience their first day. Okay, and what is that? Generally what happens is it becomes a blur, right? Right. You come in, you fill out the forms for showing that you're able to work in the U.S., so the E-Verify or the I-9 form. Then you fill out your IRS form for your deductions. Mm -hmm. And then you, you make bring your, your passport, right? And right? your ID, two forms of identification. Exactly. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. I have good memorization every once in a while. Yeah. And then you have your benefits. You choose which ones you want. Right. And then there is usually uh, sexual harassment training and... Um, <laughs> Boy, that's been missing for a long time. <laughs> <Tell you>. Yeah, <laughs> this is a perfect time to bring that up, exactly. right? Exactly. And, uh, and then you have, uh, you know, the other things are pretty much just running. Mm -hmm. and, but there's always a few things that people should do on their first job or first day on the job that they don't even think about. Okay, well, this is, this is good because I'm thinking about my first day here. It was just a lot of... Who do I talk to? What do I do? And then, I, like you said, it's just a blur. You go throughout the whole day and you go, okay, I just learned so much. Now do I, should I write this down? How do I apply it, you know, throughout right. the next few months or longer? Right. So what kind of uh, things should we be considering? Well, one of the things that's very important is to understand that we're now in a new world of employment. Okay. It's completely different from the days of old. Where Tell you, me how. Well, it used to be you'd go to work for a company and you were there for your entire career. Right, yes. Those days are gone. We're a little different now. Yeah, and so what happens, you go to work for a big company, they're bought by a bigger company, mm -hmm. they do layoffs, and you know, unfortunately sometimes you're one of the people who gets laid off, now you're out there looking for your next job. Right. So one of the things that's really, really important is to make sure you sit down, reflect, what things went well during my search, Okay. and I should do again if that happens again, and where do I need to improve next time? So what, what areas are you seeing that people need to improve on? Typically networking. Really? Yeah. We've yeah. talked, we've done some segments on networking as well. Mm -hmm. Guys, you should be on the ball on this one. That's right. You tell definitely us, should be. Tell us how we should improve our networking. Just be out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I coached girls basketball, 7th and 8th grade girls basketball for almost 20 years in Maryland and Iowa. And when you coach basketball or soccer, it doesn't matter, or any sport, show them you're open. Yeah. Okay? And the same thing is true in a job search. Let them know you're looking. Yeah, if they don't know you're <laughs> available, then how are they going to give you a job? That's correct. So what, what kind of tips do you have for that? Should we be on LinkedIn? Should we be posting? on social media, hey, I'm looking for a job, I mean. Well, you wanna be on LinkedIn and, and understand what other companies are using, what words they're using to describe what it is that you do and uh -huh. wanna do, uh -huh. and then use those words in your profile so the keyword searches pops you up. Right, well, that's easy. Isn't it weird how easy it is now to find a job? Well, it's still pretty hard, but. You yeah. think so? Yeah, I think if you network, you improve your chances greatly. Yeah, and you can do it in real life too and not just on a computer. That's correct, it's best to do it in real life. Yeah, because, because you actually make personal connections. Exactly, so what happens, and I, you know, I'm a recruiting consultant, so I go in and out of companies, and what I see is the most junior person in HR mm -hmm. is the one retrieving the resumes. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know there's 34 different titles for sales. Right. And so, in one of my speeches, I, I say, wow, do you hear that? It's people jumping up and down the applicant tracking system saying, pick me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> and so and true. nobody knows how to get them out. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> well, I like this. Okay, we're on the first day of our job. We mm -hmm. have the job now. What kinds of questions should we be asking our new bosses? This is very important to do. Ask your boss what the three month, six month, nine month, and 12 month targets or goals or expectations they have for you. Okay, so you want like personal goals. Personal goals. Interesting. And the reason you want that is at the end of 12 months, that person is gonna be doing an annual review of you, right? Mm hmm And so it's important to know where you need to be right. in that process at different points. And you wanna ask that on the first day? Absolutely, when's a better day? 
I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I guess my brain doesn't work that well on my first day. Well, it should, I, but that's what that's what's really important because then you know at the second day what you really be, need to be focused right. on. Right. So you can get off running. And you have short-term goals and long-term goals. That's correct. Interesting. Well, I like this idea. I'm going to put that one in the back of my mind. Uh, let's talk about the annual review. You have a little phrase. You make up the annual review. The managers many times do. Okay. And the reason is when the manager has looked at your performance over the past year, mm -hmm. if they didn't have three, six, nine, and 12-month goals for you set out, now they're just going, oh, geez, what did Kelly do? <laughs> Oh, I don't remember what she did. So maybe I'll just put she met expectations here, didn't over here. Yeah. So they just make it up. That's scary. It is scary. That feels like it should be the <laughs> It feels like it should be the opposite of what you're saying because you would expect your managers to be, you know, really on top of it, mm -hmm. keeping track of what you're doing so you feel valued or you feel undervalued, you know exactly what's happening. So, I mean, what do you do in that situation? Well, it's important for you to track your impacts during the year. Okay. And during your three month, six month, nine month, and 12 month kind of reviews with your manager, it's always good to just say, hey, let's sit down and see where I am relative to where you want me to be, mm -hmm. and then discuss the impacts that you've made. Is that braggy, or is that just what you have to do? S stating a fact. Really? It's not say, hey, look at me, look at everything I've done, mm -hmm. in a braggy way. Well, it depends on how you present it. But True. But if you present it as a factual thing and, hey, I just want to make sure I'm where you want me to be. Is mm -hmm. there anything anywhere where I need to improve? Better to know now at three months than at 12 months and get the right. zing. Well, and they're unhappy with you. Exactly. Interesting. Well, I like all these tips. Okay, and let's talk about today for a minute. Okay. You told me right before this interview, this is a special number this of interview for you. This is a benchmark interview for yeah. me. Yeah, you've hit a milestone. How many interviews have you done on television? 75, this 75 is, interviews. This is our 75th? This is my 75th. I've also had uh, one on CNN Headline News uh -huh. and KSL a couple times and a couple out in the Midwest. Oh, you're cheating on us. I, I am. <laughs> 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 That's okay. It's okay. We do get you about once a month, so you, I feel like you yeah. share the love. I do share the love as much as I can. Well, Bill, thank you so much for these tips on your first day of the job. I've always loved your tips on networking, giving your boss a first impression. You always give us kind of a good rundown of how we should be acting right now in the field. I because it's, it's changed a lot. It has changed a lot. Uh, my new book, we changed the title. Okay, what is it? It's Employee 5.0, Secrets of a Successful Job Search in a New World Order. See, this is perfect segue. We we're just kind of talking about this. So what, what kind of tips will you have in that book? Well, I added four chapters, uh -huh. and what I'm doing is I'm telling people, instead of just being where you are and then kind of coasting, you should always have your job search on simmer okay. in today's world so that if something happens, poof, you turn it up to boil and you're off and running. Well, that's a little disheartening. <laughs> a no, little bit, but, but you're, it's, you're prepared. You're prepared and you're ready to go. And when you take the notes on your first day of the things you need to improve and the things you need to continue doing, yeah. you're all set. Man, times have changed. They have. Always be ready, I guess. Yes. Well, very good uh, tips, of course, from Bill Humbert, the recruiter guy. Of course, you can find this book right now. Where can you Kindle. find the next book? The next book, uh, probably next month when I come on, I'll be able to show you the cover, which is amazing. Fun, a new design, I'm a assuming, new design, with a new title. Yes, and, um, and then I'll probably have a better idea when it's actually going to be released. Awesome. Okay, well, we're looking forward to that. Oh, me too. Thanks, Kelly. Bill, thank you. All right, we do have a lot more coming up on the Mountain Morning Show right after this.